right, our final speaker before the beer break is an award-winning fabulist best known for his long-standing feud with TV's The Littlest Hobo. <laughs> he pairs nicely with gin and will be very challenging to explain to your parents. Please give a warm welcome to Fiber the Hockey Pup. I know what some of you are thinking, and yes, the edible you took earlier tonight has finally kicked in. <laughs> hey, that's me, Fiverr the Hockey Pup. Depending on how interesting of a life you've led, I may be the first human pup you've ever encountered. I figured Wild Night would be an appropriate time to emerge from my den and give you a bit of an introduction to the human pup community, a whole subculture that exists around the world and even right here in Calgary. Having said that, I do want to make one thing very clear. The word human in human pup community is pretty key. What we do doesn't involve real animals. I'll pause for the collective sigh of relief. <laughs> but I will admit that I do have an ulterior motive here tonight. You see, my goal here is to awaken something inside of you. So let me show you how we do it doggy style. <laughs> that picture you see on screen, that's one of the first pet play costumes commercially available. And believe it or not, it dates back to the 1920s in Paris. There are even some historical accounts that suggest that pet play death dates back to the 1700s, although that's open to some debate. Suffice it to say, though, pet play isn't some new invention. Global turmoil following the World War saw a cooling of pet play, and it was reborn in the sexual revolution of the 60s. We saw the first offshoots of uh, pup play from the Leatherman community in the 1980s as participants sought a kink that connected them with a different dynamic than was present. And that's something I'll talk about in a little bit. Today, pup play is a fairly widespread phenomenon as far as obscure phenomena go. <laughs> pup and handler enthusiast groups exist across the globe and there are countless retailers and, com and uh, competitions, online and face-to-face -face communities in existence. Here in Calgary, we even have an active uh, pups and handlers group that you may have seen at Pride this year. So, the question you might be asking is, why? <laughs> What's the appeal? And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. So for most pups, it really comes down to one simple word, headspace. I want you to picture a real puppy that you've encountered in life. If you could use some words to describe that puppy's emotions, what words might come to mind? Maybe playful, excited, rambunctious, friendly, affectionate. How many of those are words that you wish applied more to your life and how you approach sex or social situations? Donning a pup hood gives the wearer permission to get out of their own headspace and take on a different one, one that's more playful and rambunctious and affectionate, one that's just more fun. For many folks, being in a pup headspace lets them feel more open open to socializing, to being touched, to getting out in the real world and opening up to the people around them. Being temporarily free of the anxieties and social norms and expectations that constrain humans is intoxicatingly freeing. That's a big draw of pup headspace. There's a great po profile of the pup community in The Stranger magazine, and one quote summed it up perfectly. Quote, if you're having trouble understanding the appeal of puppy play, just imagine how amazing it would be if there were a form of group relaxation where you could empty your mind of your cares, forget all of your responsibilities, lower all your defenses, and bypass small talk altogether. Now imagine that vigorous cuddling and praise are key components of this relaxation technique. Why aren't we all puffing right now? End quote. <laughs> Speaking of cuddling and praise, let's talk power dynamics. After all, a pup needs a handler and a pack, right? Earlier, I mentioned the connection to the Leatherman community when discussing the origins of pet play. As you can imagine, the power dynamics in the leather community are fairly regimented and strict, and the interplay between doms and subs can seem quite harsh and punitive at times. Now imagine the power dynamic if you were a handler training a real puppy. It's a much kinder, protective approach. You'd use praise and positive reinforcement, not harsh discipline or yelling. For lots of people, this type of dynamic is much more appealing. And even between pups, there are dynamics. There are dominant pups, the alphas, submissive pups, the betas, than pups who are submissive to alphas and betas who are the omegas. It's all about finding a role that gives you the greatest enjoyment while you're in your puppy headspace. Let's talk about the appeal of the gear used in puppy play. So all the pup photos that you see in my slides tonight 
reflect pups from all around the world, all of whom have their own unique style and identity. Pup hoods provide anonymity, but at the same time, they provide an identity. Of all the pups I know, I could only identify a handful by their human faces. To me, they're all pups. Pup play allows you to express yourself in a way that's meaningful to you. So in my case, I'm into sports gear, so I'm the hockey pup. For others, it's leather or latex or feminine clothing. Or for some pups, it's little or no gear at all. There's no minimum gear requirement to being a pup. <laughs> all you need to do is hop on your bed, wag your ass happily, and bark. No <laughs> little bark. And can we talk about eyes for a second? Like, I think that's probably what drew me into pup hoods so strongly at the outset. They say eyes are the windows to the soul. And I think pup hoods do an amazing job framing and amplifying the wearer's eyes. And if you want to test this out, you can get lost in mine at the beer break. <laughs> Finally, I want to talk about the global pup community. In my slides tonight, there are pups who identify as male, as female, as non-binary, as trans. There are young pups and older gray muzzles, different body types and ethnic backgrounds and levels of physical ability, sexual to asexual. In the pup community, none of that matters. We're all just dogs playing in the dog park together. When you saw me walk out tonight, I'm sure you had an interesting reaction. And you know, I felt the same way when I stumbled across pup play. Like, come on, people dressing up like dogs and acting like dogs, like, come on. But I hope I've illuminated why this community exists and given you a taste of what I personally get out of it. At the start of my talk, I told you I had an ulterior motive. I said it was my goal to awaken something in you t inside of you tonight. The last line there is that I'm trying to convert you all into pups, but the fact is, I know that's not going to happen. And frankly, if everyone was into pup play, it wouldn't be a kink anymore, it would just be mainstream. <laughs> Instead, what I hope I awakened in you tonight is a curiosity. A curiosity about the wild side of humanity called kink. You see, pup play is my kink, and I get a lot out of it. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I hope that you have a kink that does the same for you. Maybe it's leather, maybe it's water sports, and I don't mean jet skis. Maybe it's bondage, or handcuffs, or electro stim, or role play. Heck, for the straight people in the room, maybe it's sex in the missionary position while keeping your socks on. <laughs> I hope there's a kink that excites you, that gives you permission to be someone different for a while. A kink with gear that turns you on and scratches an itch in the primal, irrational part of your brain that doesn't think, but just feels and acts. After all, what's life without a wild side?